And PIX11 is your local election headquarters. Right now, we are closely following New York's special election. Yeah, residents in Nassau County and parts of Queens are choosing a new member of Congress to replace George Santos. Other choices, Democrat Tom Swazi, who's running for his former seat, or Republican Mozzie Pillup, who's hoping to keep the district red. Now, we're live with team coverage tonight. PIX11's Eileen LaPalmer has more on the impact today's winter storm is having on voter turnout, but we've Again, with our Henry Rossoff with the candidate's last push to get out the vote. Henry. We are at the headquarters of former Congressman Tom Swazi to, trying to reclaim his own job. It's way too early for him to be here or his supporters. They're really out trying to stir up the last few votes, especially now that the snow has stopped falling. And that effort may be doubly important for his Republican challenger, Mozzie Pillup, based on the early returns that we have seen so far. Swazi, Swazi, Swazi. All right, Swazi. Rallying with supporters, former Democratic Congressman Tom Swazi is trying to reclaim a seat he held for six years before a failed run for governor. His challenger is Nassau County Republican legislator Mazi Pillup. You're going to send the little girl from Ethiopia, from the village of Ethiopia, to United States Congress. This is a closely watched contest, not just because of the many scandals of George Santos causing him to be kicked out of Congress, but also because the issues, messaging, and tactics in this race could be copied around the country in swing districts come November. Swazi has taken a more moderate line than most in his party, taking the immigration and migrant issue a sore spot for Democrats head on. He's promising compromise, previewing his message in Washington. I'm going to say, wake up! The people are sick of this. Get stuff done for the people. Swazi's early voter and absentee ballot operation appears to have given him an edge heading into Election Day, so Pillup needs a big mobilization effort today. She's tried to moderate on key issues like gun control and abortion, but was cagey about her previous support for former President Trump until the closing days of the campaign. Mainly, she's stuck to Republican Party positions and platitudes, which have done increasingly well in Nassau County recently. This is the day we're going to go out to vote to secure the borders, to support law enforcement, to improve our economy. So when will we know who won? Well, first of all, the polls close both in Queens and Nassau County at 9 o'clock, so it could be a late night tonight, perhaps into tomorrow morning, depending on how close this is. Certification could take a day or two. But the goal here with the special election is to get a representative of the 3rd Congressional District back to Congress as soon as possible. Live in Woodbury, Henry Rossoff, PIX11 News. All right, thank you, Henry. Meanwhile, the stakes in the race are high. So, too, are the concerns over people being able to make it to the voting booth today because of the snow. Our Eileen LaPalmer has that part of our coverage. Eileen. Well, it's nice and warm and dry in here. This is where Republicans will gather later tonight. You can see the stage set here behind me. And there was several days of early voting here in District 3, as well as the polls are open today until 9 o'clock. But as you mentioned, it snowed for a good part of today. We have some video from earlier where you can see the snow coming down as people head to those polls. The campaigns for both candidates did offer rides to voters to take them to the polls stations. So far, we're told that some 33,000 people have cast their votes. That includes more than 11,000 registered Democrats and 12,000 registered Republicans. But of course, there's no way to know how they're voting, whether or not they're crossing party lines when it comes to this special election. We also spoke to the party leaders for both Democrats and the Republicans to see what they think about how the snow is affecting things. Well, we, uh, we are confident the snow definitely is a factor. Some people who normally vote early uh, didn't vote. Mm -hmm. So we're going to we're making calls and we're going to get them out later. We're running pretty tight to the Republicans. Uh, typically, the Republicans in the morning get their vote, vote out early. I think um, they may have been at a disadvantage this morning, uh, but they're not picking up steam. So they're running about 4.6 percent better than uh, we are. But uh, last year at this time, it was about 10 percent better. I mean, two, in 2022. So, um, you know, we tend to improve as the day goes on. And traditionally, Republican voters come out day of where Democrats more likely to do the early voting. We did speak with voters here who were out in the snow this morning. Nothing would have stopped me from coming down to vote today. I'm glad it does, it's not impassable. Uh, I'm glad it's not going to get delayed anymore. Um, 
it's it's uh, it's a worthwhile reason to get out of the house on a on a crappy day. Listen, the snow doesn't slow me down, so I get where I have to go, whether it be work or somewhere else. Uh, so this is an important thing to do. And of course, the polls close at nine o'clock. It's not known at this point whether we will even have results tonight or would take several days to certify this election. We are live here in East Meadow. Eileen LaPalmer, PIX11 News. Okay.